On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about surgery for people with FAI and cam and pincer lesions of the hip. We talk about do imaging studies correlate to symptoms, and we talk about squatting patterns for people with flat feet. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. back everybody the ask mike reynolds show we're here on episode 12 we're just rolling them out today a bunch of great questions from you guys uh thanks so much for you know all the great feedback we are getting a ton of emails a ton of tweets and stuff like that from everybody just kind of telling us how much they appreciate the show and, and have loved the feedback um, i will admit we are getting a lot of positive feedback i'm not getting a lot of constructive criticism so um you know maybe you know maybe we're doing everything well i doubt it but um we do want to hear from you guys so email us tweet at us, you know, whatever. We want to kind of hear if there's ways that we can make the show better for you. So more Dave Tilly. So more Dave Tilly. I said more Dave Tilly personally. Hashtag the one hashtag. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so anyway, so welcome back. Episode 12. Again, I'm here with Lenny McCrina, Dave Tilly, Gabe Morgan. We're kind of all here answering your questions here. Um, you know, let's, let's, let's just get right to it, right? We're getting, we're getting less fancy, I guess. I don't know. No, it's good. It's episode yeah, 12, right? Episode 12. I'm running out of ideas, I guess. So, <laughs> Gabe, let's see. Gabe, let's let's play a game with Gabe. You have to ask the questions like Morgan Freeman. with different, yeah, with different <laughs> impersonations. First one, Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. I don't know. That might be a little dangerous. And then we need to guess who you're trying to be. <laughs> <And then, laughs> so the crowd starts coming out, and then try to understand what I'm trying to say. I like this. The second one will be like via R two D two. <laughs> we have to figure that out. Or Yoda. How about Yoda? Yoda would be yeah, a good one. Like Alright, go, how do it like a cowboy. Go. That's gonna be kinda hard to do. Um Connor from uh Washington asks. Is that your cowboy? That sounds like, that sounds <laughs> yeah. like you know it's close, it's close. Alright, who we? Give us your cowboy. I was gonna say, hey cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you recommend PT management and activity modification for hip cam and pincer impingement, or should patients opt for surgery to resurface the joint? What PT management strategies do you suggest, especially for athletes wanting to return to sport at a recreational or collegiate level? All right, so I will say that was cowboyish. So we gotta, we'll, we'll figure out. Let's all pick one. You pick the next one he does, and then you pick the third one. It'll be good. Think about it. But all right, so essentially, what you know, what do we do for for FAI? I guess for the hip. Um, uh, you know, you, you made it a very black and white question, right? Like, do we treat them or do they have surgery? It's, I say surgery. So <laughs> Why not? That's, that's a drastic jump. Yeah, that was a big jump. You know, um, I, you know, I, 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 FAI stinks. I think that's what we're 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 kind of figuring that out. That's tweetable. You can tweet that there. FAI stinks. Um, FAI is tough, and I think a lot of times we don't find it till it's too late. And I think at that time, a lot of people kind of already might need that. Um, but you know, I, I don't I don't know if the results are quite year there yet like if you know how successful the surgeries are those types of things I think if you need it you need it and you got to get it done and I think it can really buy you some time I just um, I, I think we still got a lot to learn I mean if you have bony anatomical changes like a, a, a cam and pincer lesion like you kind of alluded to in your question you know if those are pretty significant and you're having hip pain you're probably getting closer down the road to surgery you know I mean there's you know I mean there's not you know you know what can we do is we just maintain mobility you know uh, mobility of the joint mobility of the soft tissue, the strength around the area, there's really not a, a ton you can necessarily do if you have anatomical changes. PT can't change that, but we can enhance their alignment, we can enhance their soft tissue mobility, we can get them as strong as we can, and that might help, that might buy some time. But if they're already symptomatic and those lesions are starting to cause like, like labral tears, like acetabular labral tears, um, you probably want to be more proactive with surgery before they go down a road that they can't come back from. So um, Len, we've got a few FAIs kind of recently, I mean, anything else you would add to that? Yeah. I mean, I think if you think of it like the shoulder, which I tend to go back to the shoulder, I think a trial of PT can't hurt. I think it's going to help the person even if they do have surgery. So maybe we can get them some symptomatic relief with, you know, some joint mobs, capsule mobility type stuff, soft tissue work, like Mike said, strengthening. Um, and I think most of the ones that we see here, I think we, we see them in a different stage, like he said that they are so far along down the road that in their head they want surgery. They've either failed previous PT or they've just had it so long that 
it affects their quality of life. For us, it's going to be playing sports. And so we get them in. We see them for a short period of time. We see if we can help them out. We give them stuff to do at home. But, you know, more often than not, they're, we're seeing people having to have the surgery. And, um, you know, it, it, we've gotten good results with it. You know, the people that I've seen have the hip scopes do very well, and um, at least in my hands. And I know the results vary all over um, research-wise, but people that I see do well. Yeah, and I've I've seen people try to put it off, and it go really poorly for yeah, them. Yeah. So you know it's if it's that far you know, along down the road, you know it's you know you, you know where you're going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Educate and, and and get them ready. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, I think we got that. Question two, Dave. How would you like Gabe to address the question? I want you to do it like Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. I don't even know who that is, but what? good luck. To infinity I've and never seen a Disney movie, sorry, but I do have a new daughter, so I imagine I will be over the next Come few on. Days. You have a new daughter. You have old daughters, I have an old too? Daughter. I have a new, I have a new daughter. <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> have you a just, daughter. Uh, just purchased it from yeah, Apple.com? It's amazing to get it on the World Wide Web. Um, so, uh, Buzz Lightyear? So, uh, Peter Bloom from Florida. To the Vandy and Beyond. Nice. Buzz Lightyear like Gabe. <laughs> Come on, Gabe. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear. Let me hear it, man. I can't tell like my home, like my whole like home improvement voice. That's true. Yeah, that's a good yeah, point. Very hard. Yeah. Um, right. So, what is the value of imaging studies? Is there a relationship between imaging findings, injury, and symptoms? All right. Good question. I, that, this goes right to the FAI. Yeah. Th- th- I mean, this one's pretty common too. So, like, I, if you did an MRI on everything right now, would you would you find something? Yeah. I mean, I think all of us probably have uh, findings on imaging that don't correlate to how we feel. Like, my back might be messed up. I don't know. I'm sure my shoulder's not good. I still I play catch three times a day. I mean, I'm almost 40 years old. I mean, like, yeah, I'm sure I have a slap tear. I'm sure I have those things. So, yeah. I I think you're barking up the right tree. But Len, like, what are some of the stats? Like. How about maybe with like baseball players is a good example or an athlete there like you know isn't it pretty common that they're pretty messed up? It is very common that they're messed up. Uh, <laughs> gymnasts, baseball, those sports that are just rigorous on the joint. Um, I worked with Dr. Andrews and he used to always tell people because everybody would come to Alabama like hoping for some kind of imaging, either MRI or something, typically MRI, um, and his response was always. It's an excuse to do surgery. If you do an MRI on somebody, especially an athlete, that's going to be the surgeon's excuse to cut them open, and then everything changes after that. And so you never want to just jump into that without going other treatments of PT, of course, uh, any injections, uh, depending on the joint, uh, things of that nature, any supplements, uh, activity modifications, so many other things you can do before you jump in and get that devastating MRI that's going to show degenerative tearing and other things of that nature where the surgeon's going to say, we got to go in there, let's just scope it and see what's going on. Uh, many times it's fine, but oftentimes there's other ways that you can approach the injury and, and, and get equally, if not better results. We're starting to see research on rotator cuff tears that if the, uh, they do show up on an MRI that PT is equally as effective, if not more effective in certain populations, uh, than surgery itself. So even if they do have an MRI to show something, maybe PT is still the course. So why not skip the MRI and waste $2,000 plus and just continue doing PT? I'm a therapist, so I may be a little biased, but... <laughs> what, what's the percentage of baseball players with uh, yeah, that I mean, are asymptomatic that have I findings? Mean, from what I've seen, it's 70, 80% of guys, if they have an MRI, it's going to show something. So four to five athletes, if they have an MRI, are going to show something, you know, labral tear or biceps degeneration or rotator data cup pathology and we know many of them if they do have an MRI have been throwing at a very high level with what we would call pathology or injury in the joint so and they're they're just fine you know some of the preseason physicals or if a guy is going to get traded or something of that nature and they have to do some of these studies it's showing up but they're still performing, you know, so you can't really go off of just, uh, yeah. you know, just diagnostic imaging. Yeah, I mean, the, a large percentage of asym- asymptomatic have findings. It's true. So there's the, there's a stat, too. So Lenny kind of referenced that. I think it's actually more like 75 to 85% have cuff and labral kind of pathology on MRI and they're asymptomatic. But, Dave, do you know the number off the top of your head? I, this is um, similar studies been published on the lumbar spine. Yeah. Yeah, I forget the percentage of people that have lumbar spine findings that are asymptomatic. Super high, especially after you go after like 30, 40, 50, like 30, there's like a upwards of 60, then like 40, 50. It's like you're going to have joint changes, you're going to have herniation discs, you're going to have some sort of facet changes. Like even in the highly elite athletic population like that, there was a study on the Olympic team for gymnastics and it was like 70% had something irregular, 
three head pain. Right. So it was like, right. you know, I think it's in conjunction with your movement evaluation with everything they tell you as like one piece of the puzzle. If you just stare at the scan and you're like, okay, I'm going to look for a rotator cuff tear. I'm going to look for a facet joint right. something. You're going to be, you know, hold your head a little bit. Yeah, and oftentimes that doesn't necessarily mean surgery, but that just tells you, all right, you know, using the shoulder as an example, if they have a labral tear, okay, their static stability is not great. We have to really make sure they have pristine dynamic stability. You know, and I've seen the flip too, right, where you have somebody that has a pretty clean MRI that, but is debilitated with, right. with, with symptoms. So, you know, um, they don't correlate, but it's a piece of the puzzle, and I don't, I don't think you can you know completely say that they're a waste of time I mean they're they're extremely important I think we need them but if, if you can't make all your decisions on them I guess so well all right question three Len did you have a re request for the Gabinator yeah, you know having lived in Boston now for about six seven weeks I want you to read this question with a very th wicked thick Boston accent so oh, like Lenny yeah like <laughs> yeah that's perfect so, so like, yeah so impersonate Lenny that's yeah. fantastic I love it that, that's very difficult for me to do. Um, <laughs> You're very flat. I, 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 I think it's the coffee. Uh, Jim, James Gill from uh, British Columbia asks, this is, that's not a Boston I accent. Can't, I can't do the Boston. You're not going to try British it? Colum oh, it would be British yeah, Columbia. 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 It British would Columbia. It would definitely be Columbia. I'll butcher it, and I don't want to butcher. do it. Butcher. I would butcher it. Oh, I don't want to do the Columbia Boston than somebody answer. else. <laughs> Failing is clinical. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> All right. Uh, James Gill asks, I noticed that a lot of my clients are flat-footed when they, when they go into a squatting pattern. Their feet over pronate and go even flatter. I also noticed that they have really poor calf range of motion. What would you do to address this issue? Poof. That Dave. is not a Boston accent. Yeah, so terrible game. Many terrible game. I don't even listen to the question. Terrible game. Um, Dave, you want to start that one? That's flat, yeah. flat foot. Sounds like poor dorsiflexion is yeah. how I would uh, take that during a squat. Um, what do you think? So, usually most is going to be soft tissue, right? That's kind of like the bigger glaring issue is whatever people are doing, like they do have soft tissue limitations. Like what do I do personally for it? Uh, I'm a fan of like obviously manual therapy of any degree, like a little bit of tool assisted versus some like active range of motion kind of pin and stretch stuff. Where did you learn your instrument assisted? Was it from from IASTMtechnique.com? Yes, and then I used my Lenmac uh, MedBridge promo code after that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I bought the athlete's shoulder and... Uh, and he drinks five bucks of coffee. Yes. Yeah. And then I, uh, all, all true stories. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right, so, so you, you do some instrument assisted. Like pro and soft tissue stuff. ISTM <clears> is good. Um, and if they have a joint restriction, like obviously posterior capsules issue and TC joint, but there's a lot of other stuff that can cause someone to overpronate, especially in a squat, right? So like we were talking about anterior pelvic tilt and someone has really poor hip flexion range of motion or something's going on top, they're going to be dumped into a valgus position and they're going to overpronate. So like maybe it is their calf, you rule them in with like a half kneeling dorsiflexion test, but if they're still overpronating and they're like clearing the calf tests, like, well, there's something else you got to figure out. I found that many people have really poor pure hip flexion range of motion and then they have this terrible squat and they just stretch their calves all day long and they never get anywhere. So yeah, that's so something to consider too. Maybe they, maybe they're doing that because they're lacking motion elsewhere. Right. So right. They're that's making up for it in their pronation, like their subtalic. That's yeah. the common. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Yeah. I do treat a lot of calves, but I also do treat a lot of squats. Yeah, you treat calves or do you treat ankles? Maybe calves, only calves, no ankles. No. Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. Another episode in the book. 12 now. We got a dozen. Boom. So congrats, everybody. Gabe, keep it up, man. I'm That's right. Work with that Boston accent. Gabe Next, is, we're going to do Boston, Buzz Lightyear, and all of them together. Gabe's going to come back strong. So not good on the fly, but we'll, we're going we're gonna to work on something for next time. We'll see. Maybe, what if Gabe's in costumes? <laughs> Ooh. Little hats? I mean, I used to wear hats all the time in Savannah, so... Might try that out. Maybe a bonnet? Maybe good, one of the good, good anecdote right there. You used to wear hats all the time. <laughs> awesome. Boston, stop hats. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much, guys. We appreciate it. Hope you guys are enjoying our banter and nonsense. This is what we do all day. So welcome to a day in the life with us at Champion. So uh, keep asking us questions. Subscribe, you know, whatever, iTunes, Stitcher, Android. Uh, I don't know. There's so many things I don't get. Um, but check those things out. You know, we're doing the, the YouTube version, too. So if you're used to listen to this on iTunes or something in the podcast, check it out on YouTube for a video too so you can actually you know, see us look like idiots as well as sound like idiots. So um, hopefully that'll be good. But thanks so much for joining us, guys. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Boom. You didn't do it? <laughs> <laughs>